Hey there everybody, Indro here and today we'll create this animated parallax double exposure effect. So let's get started right after the intro. We are here in Photoshop and let's load up our background image. I have this beautiful shot of the city and let's load up our top image. For this I have this awesome portrait. You can find links to these images in the description section below. I'll just crop the document a bit to get rid of the unwanted pixels. You can hit C on the keyboard or get this crop tool from here. And for this effect I will be unchecking this delete cropped pixels so that we have these pixels over there and we can use them in our animation if we want to. So let's make our selection and click this tick mark to commit our changes. Now let's get started with applying the double exposure effect. Well I have one video dedicated to double exposure effect. You can find it right now in the top info card. Maybe to this portrait I'll apply a little bit of levels to brighten up the white areas. Let's go to image adjustments levels and I'll drag this white slider a little bit towards the left. Let's click OK. Now to apply our double exposure effect, I'll be using the blend if. I'll simply right click and select blending options and we have blend if over here. So here are two sections, one is this layer which affects this layer where we are applying the blend if and another is underlying layer. So inside this layer slider, we'll simply drag this black node point to the right and you will see that it's removing the black areas from our image. So we need to hold ALT or options on the keyboard so that this slider splits and makes our effect smooth. Once we're happy with the effect, let's click OK. Now if you want some parts of this image to show, we can easily do that. Let's duplicate by right clicking and select duplicate layer. We'll remove the blending options that we applied right now from this one by right clicking and selecting clear layer style. So this has cleared up our blending options that we applied a moment before and let's apply an inverted layer mask for that hold alter option on your keyboard and click this layer mask icon so we have one negative or inverted layer mask that hides everything it's filled with black you can see maybe i'll increase the size of these thumbnails and i'll just take a soft round brush with hardness zero and i'll take color white and paint on the layer mask as you know if we paint with white on the layer mask it shows or reveals and if we paint with black on the layer mask it hides our conceals with the reduced opacity and flow i'll simply paint over the eyes so that it shows up and once we are happy we'll hold shift on the keyboard highlight both of these layers right click and select convert to smart object now we can start animating for that we need our animation timeline let's go to window and bring up our timeline Next, we need to click this create video timeline. If you have create frame animation, you can simply select create video timeline from this drop down menu. And once you click it, you have your five second timeline ready. If you want to learn more in details about animation in Photoshop, I have dedicated videos on it. You can find them on the top right info card. So for this effect, we'd be needing to transform or scale our image. So we need to convert the layers to smart object. If we do not convert them to smart object, we won't be having the transform operation in our timeline and we'll be having this position. But we do not want this position, so we need to convert it into a smart object. We can do that by right clicking and selecting convert to smart object. And just as it's converted to a smart object, you can see that now we have our transform operation. So let's bring up the transform operation for our top layer and let's start animating. But before that, I'd highly recommend you reduce your image size, go to image, image size and maybe take it down to 800 pixels otherwise it will be very taxing on your system and once you export it out as a gif file the size will be very large so let's keep it to 800 pixels by width for the time being and let's click ok let's get started by clicking this transform stopwatch and you can see photoshop has placed a keyframe in our transform animation timeline Let's drag our timeline marker all the way to the 5 second position and let's bring up our free transform tool by pressing Ctrl T or Command T on the keyboard. Once we have our free transform tool open, make sure maintain aspect ratio link icon is clicked and let's increase our size. This should be fine. Let's click this tick mark to commit our changes. 
Now let's add some animation to our background layer. Let's select the layer and for the top layer we scaled it up as we progressed with our animation. So for this layer to make things interesting we'll scale it down as we progress from 0 to 5 second position in our animation. Let's click this transform stopwatch to place the keyframe and start recording our animation. And bring up our free transform tool by pressing Ctrl T or Command T on the keyboard. Now let's scale it down. It's going out of bounds, you can easily move it and place it where you want to. Let's commit our changes. And grab the timeline marker and take it all the way to the starting point of this animation. Bring up our free transform tool again by pressing Ctrl T or Command T on the keyboard and let's scale it up. You can move it wherever you want and place it to align to your double exposure effect. Let's commit our changes and you can see Photoshop has placed a keyframe over there as well. We should be done with our animation and let's play it but before that click this settings icon and make sure loop playback is checked. And now let's click our play button and see what we have got. Alright, let's polish things up by adding a little fade to white effect. To do that, you can add simple Photoshop default transitions to our timelines. Here is our transition menu. Just click it to make the list of transitions to appear. Simply select fade with white and drag and drop it to the end of the timeline for both of these layers and also drag and drop it to the beginning of the timeline for both of the layers. We need to reduce the duration of the transitions just by dragging it. Let's do the same over here. And now let's play it again. Now that looks a lot smoother. Now I'll also show you how you can export it out as a GIF file or an MP4 file so that you can post it to your social media, your Instagram and get famous. Let's pause our animation and let's go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. Over here we will change our preset to GIF or GIF however you want to pronounce it. It may take some time depending on your system configuration for Photoshop to render the preview. You can adjust the settings from here to see what works best. I think the GIF with adaptive and noise is working best for here but the size is pretty large. So let's try reducing it and let's see if we get some benefits. Okay, make sure forever is selected in your looping options and let's save it. Let's check our animation. So it works. I'll also show you how you can export it out as an mp4 video file. To do that let's go to file, export, render video. Make sure format is selected as h.264 and work area is also selected. Let's rename our file. And let's render it. There you go. I hope you liked today's effect and if this video helped you in any way, please consider subscribing my channel so that it can help me create more videos like this. I'll see you in my next video and till then, enjoy creating.